Hi, this is Dan Sullivan. I'd like to welcome you to the Multiplier Mindset Podcast. Today's Free Zone Transformation Story comes to us from Victoria, just north of Melbourne in Australia. The actual place is called Malvern, and this is Maurice Pettain. And Maurice is a financial advisor who has two great stories to tell. One is the great story of growing up and having great parents who gave him proper direction and proper care and proper support and got him off to a good start. But because they worked all the time, that wasn't a great story for him. So he decided, you know, that he was going to make sure that success was connected with happiness. And happiness requires that you have a balanced life. And that matched up perfectly with strategic coach. And I should say here that Maurice really invests in strategic coach because round trip for Maurice is 30 hours in the air to get to his workshop. And I'm always amazed at two things about the Australians when they come to the strategic coach. One is they're the best prepared people you ever met in your life because they've got a long plane ride on the way over to get all their thinking straight about exactly what they want to have happen. And they're great delegators because they've got a long plane flight back home in which they put the game plans together. And for a lot of them, because they have a stop in some place like Honolulu, they actually delegate a lot on their first link of the trip. So the big thing that Maurice talks about is the concept that we went deep with in one of my quarterly books, which is called Who You Want to Be a Hero To. And he said that that was a game changer for him because once he focuses on just being a hero, knowing the who he wants to be a hero to, then competition disappears. Competition disappears because his competitors are not focused on being a hero and his competitors can't possibly compete with him on being a hero to the people that he is. So this is a it's like two gears here, you know, how you position yourself vis-a-vis other people in your field. They are trying to sell a product or a service. Your goal is to be a hero. And not only that, but you know exactly the type of person you want to be a hero to. And that person wouldn't consider talking to any other buddy who's in your field. My name is Morris. I'm from Melbourne, Australia and I lead a financial services company named Access Financial Management. I've now been involved with Strategic Coach for, this is my third year. Although, interestingly, I've probably known about Strategic Coach for a good 20 years, so have constantly wanted to get involved with Strategic Coach, but just due to different circumstances, it didn't occur as quickly as I would like. I do travel a good 30 hours or so to get to strategic coach in Chicago. And although I miss my family greatly when I do come over for that period of time, the rewards that I gain from it are just so much more greater because I get to meet some amazing influential influencers and entrepreneurs. I learn and grow, which is an important part of the objective of coming to strategic coach. As a result, I then look forward to going back home in order to share what I've learned with the team and to, I suppose, again, appreciate even more my family and what I have gained as a result of this and what I have back in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> as a child, I was very compliant and diligent and I had a natural affinity to numbers, which led me towards the financial services industry. But one thing I realised is that Luckily, I was raised by two very loving parents and what I learned in watching them as I was growing up was that they worked very hard but had little time for themselves. And so what I wanted to do as a result of that is to learn more about the connection between money and happiness. And so that led me towards the financial services industry and as a result of that, I wanted to not just be a financial planner that basically help people invest money, but to understand the link between money and happiness was a key point. So our mantra, for want of a better word, is to free people of financial concern so that they can live even happier lives. So that's critical to 
everything that we do and it's part of our ethos and our belief system and every decision that we make as a business reverts back to that particular line and make sure that we're always abiding by that. After I finished my studies, I guess I believe in fate and what occurred was that I was unsuccessful in getting a standard job in the financial services industry, which forced me, well not forced me, but led me to commence my own business and become what today is an entrepreneur. And an early question in my business career that was posed to me and resonated with me was, if you look forward 10 years, will you have 10 years of experience or will you simply be doing your first year 10 times over? And that was a point that resonated strongly with me and I wanted to make sure, being an avid learner, I had very high expectations of myself, that I wanted to make sure that I was in that first category that I had gained 10 years of experience after, in fact, ideally 10 years experience in five years or sooner so that I could apply the principles and grow and so on. An interesting story that I wanted to share in one of my early memories in starting in my business career was watching uh, a show, Candid Camera. And there was a, an incident where the Candid Camera crew waited for an unsuspecting member of the public to enter the lift. And in the next floor, there was a team of actors that basically entered the lift as well. And what they did was the opposite to what most people would do, and they faced the rear of the, the lift. And what occurred within a short space of time is that most people, as in most people that were in the lift in that point in time, the person that initially had entered felt so uncomfortable that he had to turn around and face the rear as well. And it taught me a very strong point around conformity. I believe in conformity. It's important in many different elements of everyday life. But when it came to business, I've determined that if I was to conform and do what others did in business, then I would essentially be average in that regard. And I felt that it was important to be better than average and to get better than average results meant that I needed to do things that were different. And so as an avid learner, I needed to find avenues to actually help me grow beyond what my peers were doing at that point in time. So that concept of conformity led me to one of my biggest transformations, and that was determining very early on who did I want to be a hero to. And what we did was we determined that we wanted to be narrow and deep as opposed to being broad and shallow. Essentially, we wanted to be a big fish in a little pond. Okay. What we did is we conducted focus groups with the people we wanted to be heroes to. And what it enabled us to do was to gain deep connections and a deep understanding of the hopes and dreams and fears and frustrations and essentially the dangers, opportunities and strengths that they encountered on a day-to-day -day basis. And as a result of that, we wanted to have a homogenous group of people that they could come to us to provide the solutions to the issues that they were facing. So that was very important to us. And that was a big transformation where we're actually focusing on a group that we could actually assist and make change in a positive manner to their lives. Although my logic was good, I found that probably another dominating element of my personality was the ability to ask good questions and gain a deep understanding of the issues at hand. As a child, I was naturally very inquisitive and I do remember spending many summer days lying on the beach in the sand in the warm weather, but I would be very observant of people walking around me and just watching how people interacted with one another. And in doing so, I was almost in a trance, but it actually helped me to gain greater observation skills about people in general. But then probably one of the other breakthroughs in my earlier years was in my schooling years, whereby one of my best friends would call me on a weeknight and we would have very, very long conversations. In the old days, it was basically the handheld phone. And so we would have long conversations of an evening pontificating about life and solving the world's problems. But sadly, what I learned over that period of time for him is that he was suffering from depression. But as a result of the issues that he was facing, and he probably didn't even realize it, nor did I at the time, but it gave me the skills that I required that would serve me in later day life, which is in my business career. And so I was able to ask a lot of questions of him 
and listen and then ask more questions and listen and as a result of that gain a greater and deeper understanding of the issues that in his case were facing but I was able to apply that same skill to listen to essentially what wasn't being said so to observe people to listen to what they're not saying and as a result of that it gave me greater insights in order to provide solutions and help them to live an even happier life. What I realised is that the power of questions was so critically important. In my line of work, I would ask questions of people, but what I learned very quickly is through the hopes, dreams and fears that people were sharing with me was that they would phrase questions in a manner such as, I suppose if I reflect upon it, that essentially people were tiptoeing through life, hoping to make it to death safely. And that saddened me because what was happening in that situation is that they would say to me in different ways, things like, I want to retire in three years time and then I'll start living life. And that saddened me because at the other end, I was speaking to people who were close to the end of their life and their comments were quite the opposite, such as, I wish I'd spent more time doing more things in my life as opposed to hoarding the money or being concerned about money and so on and so forth. And so what I learned very clearly is that what is the underlying question it was a key point that I reiterate time and time again. And what I found is that people, they disguise the question in different ways. But what I found in my line of work and what I do is it always came down to three words. And as much as they might phrase the question as how much do I need to retire or what are the fees or what are the costs associated with this or the other, it always came down to three words. And the three words were simply, am I okay? And so at the end of the day, what they required and wanted from me or any other advisor in that sense was the reassurance of knowing that they actually were okay and that they could actually go out and live life and do what they wanted. And so as a result, our focus altered from being a return on investment to a return on life. And so it's about maximising the return that they gained from their life with the wealth that they had available to them. I suppose we created a culture to enact change. And so if the message doesn't create change, then we haven't actually done our job. And so the importance for me is to measure and understand and ensure that there is change happening for the purpose of why we selected who we wanted to be a hero to and the reasons we wanted to be a hero to them for. This is now probably my 32nd year, believe it or not, in business. And I have enjoyed each and every day of that experience, but I won't deny that the last three years have been even greater again. And a lot of it has come through as a result of the tools and probably one of the major ones was the entrepreneurial time system that helped me understand the difference between free days, focus days and buffer days. The focus on having free time was so important so that the objective was to create one of the major reasons why I joined Strategic Coach. There were many, but one of the major ones was to create a self-managing company for one of the major purposes was so that I could actually live the life that I was sharing with my clients and actually and do the same thing and enjoy life to its fullest from that perspective as well. And I guess it's interesting because I can share my thoughts with respect to what I've learned through a story that was shared with me and it's titled The Acres of Diamond Story. And it talks about an African farmer that was farming, as you can appreciate. He was in South Africa and had learned that there were many people that were basically finding acres of diamonds and becoming very wealthy, fabulously wealthy. And as a result, he decided to sell his farm and walk through the whole continent of Africa in order to find his acres of diamonds. And after a period of 15 years, he had expended all the money that he had. He was broke. He was without a partner, without a family. And as a result, he jumped off the cliff and drowned, sadly. But Meanwhile, back at the original farm, the new farmer was enjoying the farm and as he was out watering the mules, he found there was a rock that gave out a certain a fragment of light. And as he got closer, he determined that it was actually a diamond in itself and a diamond of inestimable value. And when the individual who determined that it was a diamond of value 
asked him to take him back to the farm where he found it, all of a sudden what they found is that there was more and more of these diamonds that were basically scattered across the whole farm. And the interesting thing was that the original farmer didn't realise that he actually was sitting on acres of diamonds at that point in time and yet left his farm in order to go and search for it elsewhere. And I guess the moral of the story there is that joining a strategic coach in this example or doing any program of this nature, what we often find is that the answers are basically sitting in front of us, but they come disguised as hard work or as in work clothes. And so the idea is to actually ensure that we are working on our business and working on the issues and the complexities that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. And I particularly like the comment that Dan talks about is that all obstacles are essentially the raw material to the goals that we're wanting to achieve. And I believe that that story is a great example of the moral behind a lot of the essence of what comes out of Strategic Coach. So I'm extremely grateful of the fact that I have joined Strategic Coach and am probably enjoying more and more of the days that I have as a result of what I'm learning. But as a result of that, I find that I'm doing more and more what I love each and every day and importantly, having a loving family that supports me along the way as well. I suppose my parents being raised of an ethnic background and in the war period, they probably knew no different. And it was all about hard work and putting food on the table and so on. But with reflection, and I would say the, the same to them as I say to clients today, when we have a greater understanding of the levers that one can pull in order to enjoy the life that you want to enjoy, there's no reason why you can't have what you want right here and now. And that it's about basically understanding and being clear on what those goals and objectives that you have for yourself and for your family and loved ones, and then creating a plan to ensure that that becomes reality. So yeah. I think one of the key elements that we should never take for granted is that being an entrepreneur is a lonely position to be in. And what we find is that there are very few people, in particular team members, have a different way of thinking. And as much as we want to educate them and share the whole concept that comes from strategic coach, it is very different. The issues that they face once they leave the office versus the issues that an entrepreneur faces day to day are very, very different. And so building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs and influencers that we have at strategic coach, I think is extremely powerful and to me, building those connections is critically important. I foster them, I enjoy them, I love them to death in that sense there. And it's not just the attendees and participants in the course, but it's also the support people in Chicago here and Toronto probably, not that I've mentioned, that I've met anybody there. What I learned early on is that, firstly, I was the only person from Australia in the group, and there were very few Australians that had come to Strategic Coach which is sad because I think it's an enormous opportunity both for strategic coach and for people in Australia to gain some additional benefits as a result of what coach offers. And so I guess it was a first step to introduce a little bit more about Australia to some of the people here in the office and some of the coaches that I've enjoyed working with. And it was just a very small way of saying thank you and how grateful I am for the opportunity and everything that they've shared with me and just giving that little bit of a taste of Australia being the koala bear. And I did insert a little message in there, which was around the koala bear's Colby score, which was a zero, 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 <laughs> with a note on how, what each of those zeros meant, which I can't remember off the top of my head now. But my intention was to send that through the mail a number of months ago, but my concern was the mail and essentially whether it would get here in an appropriate time frame, whether it would actually get here in, at all. And so, I then thought about hand delivering it, but I didn't think it would have the same impact. So I bit the bullet and sent it off, and thankfully it did arrive only a few days before I arrived, but it got here. So, yeah. <laughs>